On this episode of Eat Sleep Drive, I drive my 1970s van 1,200 miles to the Badlands of South Dakota to work and live in a beautiful remote location. Well, today is the day. I'm departing in the van and heading out west. It's the weekend, so I'm gonna spend the weekend doing my driving, getting out there, and then once I get to my destination, I'll be able to log in and do my job during the day and then hopefully explore things at night. The big thing I wanna talk about today is where I plan to go. So I'm shooting for Iowa City, which is roughly an eight hour drive from where I am in Cincinnati, in a normal car. I am as you would imagine driving a 1979 van that doesn't go super fast. So who knows how long it's gonna take me and I'm, you know, per the usual, a little bit behind, so starting a little later in the day. So we'll see how far we get. Let's get this thing on the road. It's always a good start. Well, not a great start. So I was just idling the car, getting it up to temperature, because old cars really, especially carbureted cars, don't really run great until they're up to temperature. And I'm like, what is that noise? I'm hearing like a rattling under the car. And I start to look here, the casket is just like rattling around in there and it looks like that flange has become loose. So not exactly a good start. I'm gonna try and tighten it and see if it's any better it's not like the end of the world to have an exhaust leak, but I don't really want to be dealing with problems before I even get going. Well, here's the situation. I tightened up those fasteners as much as I could right there, and it's a little better, but the gasket is just pretty much shot, which is ultimately what the problem is. End of the day, I'm not gonna let it stop me. It shouldn't, knock on wood, strand me on the side of the road. So, after that little ordeal, let's get going. First turn on this journey, and we're off. Off to where? No idea, but we're going to find out. Going into this trip, I had three main concerns that kept me from sleeping the night before. Number one, I'm driving a 40 year old van. It probably goes without saying, but the probability of something breaking at some point is quite high. And I'm going into some pretty remote places, so if it does break, hopefully it's near civilization. The second concern involves how exhausting this thing is to drive. I've driven long distances in regular cars before. 12 hours in one day, no problem. But in a 70s van, without cruise control, without AC, driving in the dead of summer, fatigue is a concern. And finally, the forecast is calling for unseasonably hot temperatures where I'm heading. In the Badlands, which is my first destination, it's going to be 97 degrees. And I'm going in what is essentially a tin can with no AC. God help me. Despite all of this, nothing was going to spoil my excitement for the adventure that awaits. The idea of this journey has been in my head for so long, and it's finally happening. Everything with the van looks tip top. Oil's good, coolant's good, she's running good. Doesn't like hot starts. 
There we go, fires up. And we averaged just over 10 miles to the gallon. It was like 10.3 miles to the gallon, hand calculated. So that bodes pretty well. It's like a 40 gallon tank. So you can go almost 400 miles if you really want to push it. I just did 300. I'm gonna grab some food and then we're going to hit the road again, hopefully for the uneventful second portion of today's trip. The rest of the drive that day was full of cornfields. Big shocker for middle of nowhere Iowa. Trust me, I know. When I did finally make it to my overnight camp, it was pretty late and of course already dark outside. I made it to George Wythe State Park. It's pitch black here, so I can't really see what this campground looks like, but I'm pretty sure there's like a river right there because I can kind of see flowing water even though it's super dark. It was a long day, roughly 600 miles, and I have another 600 miles tomorrow to get to the Badlands, which is like sort of my first like real destination. I'm gonna wake up early, hit the road tomorrow, so hopefully I'll be there in a reasonable time before dark, but the van ran great today, knock on wood, so as long as it continues to run like this the rest of the trip, I'll be super, super stoked, but I am exhausted. I'm gonna get some shut eye and I'll see you guys in the morning. So remember how I was talking about last night? I think I'm at a cool camp spot, but I can't see anything, I don't know. Check this out. <sighs> Right along the river. This weather is perfect. As you can see, I'm in a pretty little secluded spot over here. There's probably about 100 sites, a little under 100 sites at this campground. People are pretty evenly spaced out. I have no idea why more people aren't like right along the river like I am. I guess people want to be closer to like the bathrooms and stuff, but love this spot over here. This is great. Uh, but I'm just gonna pack up the van and we're gonna hit the road so I can get to the Badlands a lot earlier than I did get here last night. I won't bore you with the rest of this drive through Iowa and most of South Dakota. There's virtually nothing to see, except for all the exit signs that were completely blank labeled, quote, attractions. The most eventful part of the drive was the fact that there was a ridiculous crosswind, which in the van meant for a lot of steering correction. And also it was hot as hell without AC. One win however was I devised a little setup with my windshield reflector to prevent trucker tan. Patent pending. I'm about 45 minutes from my final destination, but I stopped off at the last minute at this wonderful little grocery store to get some ice and some food for the camping. If you've ever driven through South Dakota on I-90, there are signs everywhere for a place called Wall Drug. It's portrayed as an oasis in the desert, 
but in actuality, it's really just a tourist trap. Regardless, 23 years ago when I was on a western vacation with my mom, we stopped here and took this photo. Since I was in the area, I had to stop by to try and recreate it. I no longer have the jean shorts or fanny pack, but it turned out just the same. I'm still a huge dork. The town of Wall was only a few miles from where I planned to camp for the night, so I hit the road again, hoping to make camp before dark. Looks like people are camped along this ridge. I'm gonna try and find the access road to get there. I think this might be it. I had stumbled upon an amazing spot right along a ridge that overlooked the Badlands. Check out the view from my bed. Absolutely incredible. I'm so glad to be here. I'm so glad to have found this incredible spot. There's a decent amount of people parked along this ridge here, and I don't know like whose land it is or whatever, but clearly it's like made for people to like camp. But there's enough people like spaced out enough that it's uh feels feels nice and relatively secluded what's crazy is i have like full lte so i'll be able to work here tomorrow which is awesome so i'll have service um so that's just great i'm just so thankful to have found this spot uh, i think i another youtuber had these gps coordinates and i'll link them in the description below to pass it on but what a cool spot there's an unbelievable breeze it's cooling off nicely there's no bugs for some reason right now, and uh, this this breeze is just wonderful. The van is cooling down nicely. I'm gonna be able to sleep so good tonight, and um, I'm gonna cook up some food because I'm hungry. On the next episode of Eat Sleep Drive, I explore the Badlands and make my way towards the iconic Black Hills of South Dakota.